going on guys? Today I'm going to be talking about my new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K handheld rig. I tried to make it look as nice and neat as possible and as compact as possible as well. It's very well balanced. I'd say like if I put my thumb here, it's not tilting forwards or backwards. I'm going to be building it from the camera up and show you guys all the parts that I used to build this. If you do want to purchase any of the parts, they will be listed in the description below. As a disclaimer though guys, I am based in the UK, so all the websites that I use ship to the UK. So if you do live anywhere other than the UK, do make sure to check with the supplier that they deliver to where you are based. With that being said guys, let's get building. As you can see laid out here is everything needed to build the rig. So let's get to building. This is the Tilter full cage in the Tilter grey finish. One thing that's super cool about this cage is that at the bottom it has like a magnetic hold for an Allen key. To install the black magic into this cage, it comes with these two screws that uh, mount the camera in place. Slide it in. The screw here goes directly into the top and then screws right in. This piece here lines up. Okay, so here is the tilter top handle. Very easy to install. This bit screws into one of these three holes depending on your liking. Slide it in and then push down this thing and screw it in. Next thing we're gonna install onto the tilter cage is this sun hood. I bought this sun hood because it comes with the SSD holder that comes on top. Uh, the sun hood here is really easy to install. There's a screw right here that goes directly into this hole right here. This is what we're looking like so far with the top handle, the full cage and the sun hood. When you buy the Tilter full cage, it comes with a really nice USB-C cord and an HDMI right angle adapter, which makes uh, the cables a lot easier and a lot neater. And these screw directly into the Tilter cage, plug it in, and screw it into these holes. Last but not least, the easiest installation of this part, we have the base plate here with the 15 millimeter rod adapters, and you just slide it straight on and then you lock it in place here. Next up, we're gonna be installing the 12 inch 15 millimeter rods. Uh, these go very, very simply inside here and lock on with these side knobs here. And that is the main part of the build done. We have the cage and the rods. Next up, we're gonna install the follow focus and the monitor. The monitor I have is the Atomos Shinobi. It's a fantastic monitor. It's super bright. I think it's a thousand nits. Now holding this monitor in place is this 8 sin cage. The main reason I bought this is because it has the HDMI clamp on the side. You just slide straight in like that. With the kit comes two of these screws. Um, one goes in the top, one goes into the bottom of the cage to mount the monitor in. Cool, once you make sure both of them are nice and hand tight, then we'll move on to the next step. These are the two things um, that I use to mount my monitor to the cage. This small rig 15 millimeter adapter to NATO rail. Um, this is the parallel version. You can get one where the uh, NATO rail goes that way. This is a 15 millimeter rod, but this actually came with the Moser Air 2 gimbal that I have. If you haven't checked that video, um, go watch it. So basically what this is, is actually mounts to the bottom of a base plate and then a follow focus motor can go on it. But I felt like this was the right size and I used this as an index finger rest, you'll see in a minute. This goes straight into the top handle of the cage. Tighten this rod into the top handle, all you gotta do is turn it to the right and then it tightens the rod in so we can't move up or down or anything. To install this monitor, all I have to do is slide it in, put it to where I like it, and at the back of the small Ignator rail clamp, there is a bolt which you can turn to tighten it. So the monitor is now attached. Next up guys, we have the Viltrox EF M2 Mark II Speed Booster. As you can see, if I undo it here, we have a bit of glass in here, and that gives you an extra stop of light when you put it onto the Black Magic. We have a 0.71 times crop. This gives it a bit closer to the Super 35 look. 
So next up, we need a way to power the camera and all its components. Right here, I have the V-mount plate from Cine Gear Pro. Cine Gear Pro is a website that I got a lot of my parts from. A lot of people in the US uh, use the cam vape one, but they didn't ship to the UK or the suppliers in the UK didn't have them in stock. So I had to find another option. And this one is actually from Cine Gear Pro. It comes as a kit. You can actually buy these three parts separately. You can get this, this cheese plate separately and the actual V-mount plate separate. But you can also get it as a kit and that's what I did. We have a 12 volt DC port here. We also have an extra DTAP, a 7.2 volt DC output here and also a USB 5 volt output. And on top here, we also have a power on and off. So this can be separate to the battery. Moving on to the battery. The battery I bought and went with was the Swit PBS98S. This is a 98 watt hour battery and it's pretty compact. Look how small it is. It had two DTAP ports and as a bonus, it also had a USB port here as well. So all in all, including the battery plate, I have two USB ports and three DTAPs and also two DC outputs as well. And obviously you can turn this on and off. Mounting the plate onto the back is very, very easy. Just slide it on here and then do these bolts at the side. The V-Lock literally slides on like this and mounts on. Okay, next up we need to mount the follow focus and the follow focus system I went with is the Tilter Nucleus Nano. The Nucleus Nano mounts onto the right rod here and then I just tighten that. And then to mount the control wheel, I also bought this Tilter Nucleus Nano to 15 millimeter rod adapter. And this literally just slides on to the left hand side and then tightens with a bolt. Let's just slide it on and it's a quick release mount. So you just lock it in and there we go. Oh yeah, quickly forgot to mention at the bottom here, I have a just a random base plate just to lift it higher off the ground. So this motor bit doesn't touch the floor. Next up, what we're gonna do is add a lens onto the rig just to make it a bit more balanced. So the main build of the rig is done. All we have to do is wire everything up and make sure it powers on. This is a slim HDMI cable from Amazon. This is a 50 centimeter HDMI cable. Um, I thought it was black, but it's like this weird gray color. Next up, we have a standard USB to micro USB cable. Uh, this is to power the Nucleus Nano system. We have the Coolatron DTAP to Blackmagic power cable. This is a coiled one. The cable needs to be very short because there's not a lot of distance between the power part and the uh, battery at the back. So having a coiled one just keeps things a bit neater. Last up, we have the Hawkwoods DTAP to NPF style battery. This is to power the monitor. This was actually a super expensive cable. Um, I don't know why, but let's plug everything in and I'll show you how it all wires up. If you can see right here is um, the lock for the rod. What I do is I just tuck this wire behind it, put some Velcro and stuck it to the power regulator and put it on top of here. So all I do is I just stick it on top and it stays nice and planted. Next thing I do is get the D-tap and tuck it under the USB-C. I bring the D-tap round and I plug it into the top mount of the V-mount battery. Slim HDMI cable. Now this goes directly into the monitor up here. Plug straight in. And then hand tighten these bolts. As you can see, the HDMI cable now curves round, goes back to exactly where the battery cable is. Next, I've got the micro USB to USB. This powers the Nucleus Nano motor. And after it's wrapped round, I'm gonna pull it up and plug it into the USB port on the battery plate. Last but not least, the DTAP to Blackmagic power cable. Let's plug it in and get the whole thing working. So guys, we are pretty much done with the build. What we gotta do now is turn that on. That blue light comes on. We can tell the Blackmagic is now charging. 
And if we turn it on, if we see where the battery sign is, it says AC, meaning that we're getting DTAP power from the battery. Last few things to do is turn on the monitor, check it works. There we go. And we should be displaying everything that the camera sees. You can see that the follow focus is on. So after turning the follow focus motor on, we're in business. And that is it guys. This is the completed Pocket 4K handheld rig. This actually is my first like breakdown um, rig build video. So if you do have any suggestions on what I could do better next time, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you guys liked the video. If you did, please leave a like down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.